All right, guys. Coach Neal here again. Of course, I got Nick the Tooth as always, keeping it real. All right. So today for uh, high boost videos, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you my handgun choke. It's just a hand choke, and it's a lot of things you can do with it. It's kind of fun, but it's one of those chokes that break the rules. Where unlike certain guillotines, you go for a guillotine, they double leg you. Now you, you got countered. The handgun choke will work even if you get countered. And it's low risk, it's just a quick joke, but uh, I use it all the time with a lot of success. Just a quick little move, okay? So what it basically it is, it's off a of collar tie control, like a head control, and basically I'm gonna be grabbing my own wrist. So both my palms will be facing me, okay? So to kind of do it, just so you guys can see, I'll have like a head control, and you can start with the chin, we'll get into the setup in a little bit. I'm gonna go underneath, and then I tuck it, and then the choke, okay? So what it is is, if, imagine if you had the head control, you go to the opposite armpit, and this is just locked here. So it's here, locked, and now I squeeze. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so it's a very, very powerful choke, and it works even if a guy double legs you and all that, okay? So now, there's a lot of ways to set this up, whether on top or on the bottom, certain guard positions, or even standing when you're someone shooting on you. And it's just learning how to catch and trap, all right? Now, we'll start off like, uh, you can hit this. I like to do it on top when I'm postured. So maybe if I'm on, uh, say, I'm in Nikolai's butterfly situation or he's in a butt scoop kind of situation. When he's here and we're kind of playing and I'm just kind of keeping heavy so I don't get swept, and I, I'm trying to keep inside, elbows inside. And I want to get his head down. When he's got his head down here, he's not going to have much of a butterfly game. He's, he's pretty much immobilized and he's weak. He doesn't want to be there. But this is something you can do. So when we're here, I, I'm blocking, I stuff, and I get my grip. Right here, I can tap him, okay? And, if I, and I'm going to try. But he's going to try to pull. He's going to be freaking out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my chin on his shoulder. That way I know I'm not here. This is a good position for me to get rolled over. I never want to be here. I want to use my chest in front of his shoulder and to find that mark, it's always my chin. That way I have some driving and it protects my hips. Okay, so when I'm here, I lock, I find my head position. Now from this position, I don't want his legs to, to interrupt my base. So I'm going to keep my chest in and I'm going to pop my hips up, and I'm just going to walk past, and he's going to tap, okay, let's get more, so we might be hand fighting, he scoots in more, we're working inside, I get my frame, I get my grip, I can't stay here obviously, he's going to shock and attack, but I get his head down, I lock, right away I have my choke, if it's, he's not tapping, he starts moving, protect my hips, let him pass, there it is. Very powerful chill. Okay. Certain half guard positions, it works the same. You got a good head control. They come up and you can get it. It's it's a real neat choke. Work standing, like I said. I use it constantly. My training partners, they notice that all the time. So even if you're in like uh, say some uh, poor bottom positions, like you're on a bottom position, for example. If I'm uh, if I'm here and I'm, I'm working like an open guard scenario or half guard kind of scenario. And if I have his head and I'm working and I stretch him out and I lock, all I have to do now is treat it like a guillotine and I got a powerful choke. But the thing about this, the reason why it's so nice is because even if I'm in this scenario and I'm playing and he comes down and I stretch out and I get my lock and now he doubles me, I screw up, he gets passed. Watch, he's gonna double, still works. So at that position, I'm not, I'm not afraid if he passes. It's a very tricky choke to get out of, okay? So it gives you a little warm fuzzy when you're trying to play these kind of chokes. And there's counters to it, but usually if you have a good grip, he'll, he'll choke so fast and so much pain, the counter is gonna be nullified. When in doubt, stick with your choke. Okay, so for example, 
let's just say, um, let's say I get, I get my choke, but he double legs me. So he passes. Okay, now I have my choke. But let's say he decides to roll. I just stick with him. I stick with him, and we get my finish. Okay? You stick with your choke. There's reactive, which is this, this next choke, the same choke, but how the setup is, is more like, um, it's more risky. It's much more risky. Whereas, let's see how I can set this up. Let's go on this side, Nick. He's, I'm here, he's looking now for the double. Now when he looks for my double, he's going here, right? He's looking for the low pass. If you're quick and you know how to hit this, you can time it. So when I'm in this position, he comes down for the double, I lock my hands. So now when he starts to pass, it doesn't even matter. Once again, he's in the choke. So you can do reactive, but that right there is not your ideal situation. You never want to try to lock up a choke when you're on a low shoulder. It's only because if you miss, you passed. You want to you want to be able to sit up, use your legs, things like that. Okay. My favorite position from playing the bottom to set this up would be a half butterfly, butterfly, those kind of situations because I can stretch them out. So. If I'm playing butterfly, or I'm lacing, or I'm going deep and hooking the leg, these are all good positions. I like these a lot. But no matter if I'm playing and I'm working, I will just grab his chin and his head. So as I'm working here, I'll grab his head and chin. Okay? From here, I'll lock, and I'm going to stretch. Stretch, and my hips come out. So now, once I tuck it, you don't want to keep it in the middle. Once I tuck it, I don't want him to have to double, so I'm gonna try to come out, stretch him out, and finish. But if he doubles, I'm not worried about it. If he, as soon as he starts to double me, you can tell. Much more powerful when I'm sitting up because I can get a deep <coughs> grip and I'm solid. Okay, I'm nice and safe. Once he passes, it's deep. Like I said, trying to go for it here, so much better than trying to go for it here. Even here. It's not a bad spot. This is not a terrible spot. But here, you're just against a guy like, see, like Nick the Tooth here. He's so good at shrugging and hiding his neck. You know, you just don't want to be there trying to time a choke like that. And that's just a good overall rule. There's no sense of being on a low shoulder if you don't have to be. Now, doing it from guard, full guard, I'm not a big fan of locking this up from full guard just because of the fact I'm probably on a low shoulder. I'm on my back. It's not something I would normally go for. But it's a nice, simple hand choke. You can use it in all of these different positions. It's real simple. Grab the head, lock, chuck, and finish. Okay? That's it. That's the hand gun. Okay? Nice, fun choke. I think you guys will have a kick with it. And um, for you MMA-style guys, you can use it as counter-wrestling, too, when you guys shooting in on singles and doubles and things like that. All right? So work on the hand gun choke. Have some fun. Guys that are keep writing me about questions on techniques they want to see and, and ideas, go ahead, keep writing me. I will do my best to, to satisfy all the questions and get these films out here for Hayabusa, okay? Thanks, have a good uh, roll session, and let's get the hand choke going. All right, take care, guys.